So today I'm in the Netherlands and I thought I'd take you guys to see some of the food that I like to eat here, some of the traditional stuff and the stuff that I find uh, interesting and tasty. So I'm going to take you on a little tour. I'm going to try and get to everything that I can today, but I may not make some and the ones that I can't make, I'll just give you a list at the bottom, uh, sorry, at the bottom in the description and at the end of the video. So hold on, come to the end of the video and please, it would really help me if you guys did subscribe and do a thumbs up to these videos that I have and watch more of my videos. I really love making these and, and you guys um, giving your comments and giving me feedback really helps. Thanks a lot. So we've arrived in a little city called Setogenbosch or colloquially known as Dembos. Um, you can do a search on either one on Google Maps and you'll find it. It's down south in a region called Brabant and you can take the train here from Amsterdam or you can drive. Uh, either way is easy. Um, the reason I brought you here was because there's a particular speciality here called Bossabola which are best uh, here. They're like large profiteroles. I'll show you them now when they bring it to me. Best with coffee but uh, this is one of my favorite pastries in the Netherlands so I wanted to introduce you to this and show you this. So this is a Bossabola and it's like a very large profiterole uh, shoe pastry filled with cream inside and best served with black coffee or coffee. So we're going to try them now. They're a little messy. Um, knife to cut it with to make it a little easier. I don't know whether you can see that. Actually, let me bring it closer for you to see. The inside. Can you see that? It's all creamy. Let's see what it's like. That's a really good one. So when you're in the Netherlands, be sure to try and get a possible one. We're actually in luck today because I can see in the square over there, there's a farmer's market or a market, uh, which I think they have here every Friday. And there seems to be quite a bit of the stuff that I want to show you. So they've got a, a cheese place, a farmer's cheese place across the way just there that I can see, which I want to show you some cheese, which I recommend having here and particularly Dutch cheese. Um, there's uh, some fish stalls, which I can see as well, like smoked eels and uh, new herring. Um, and I'm sure there's some other stuff. So I'm going to take a walk around after this and then see whether I can find something else to show you, which is on my list. We're going to try some new herring here, this stall here. That's where I'm going to try that. So I'm going to try oh, the new herring. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you get for the new herring. It comes with onions and I'm going to show you how to eat it now. Just a second, I'm going to turn this around. Yeah. Can be a bit messy. It's raw herring mm. with onions. And in spring, you get the really fresh ones. As you saw, I did try the new herring. It is an acquired taste. You may not like it. It's uh, effectively um, raw uh, herring. Uh, it's salted, so it's um, cured in salt, so it's not completely raw from, from what I can tell. Uh, and uh, you eat that with some onions like you saw. It's a bit messy. It is an acquired taste. You may not like it. I'm just going to walk around a bit around this market, see whether I can find a place that uh, makes fresh stroke waffles, syrup waffles, so I can uh, uh, get rid of the taste of the herring in my mouth at this time in the morning. There are lots of cheese places here. See this? Some really nice cheese places here with uh, traditional Dutch cheeses. You can see here they've got uh, lots of different types. Most of these are Dutch cheeses and uh, a lot of them are from farms and uh, just you know, developed here. I would suggest uh, Actually, I'm not going to be able to buy any at the moment because I'm a little bit far from home and I'm going to be flying soon. So I would suggest actually if you are buying the cheese that you um, buy something called either Oude Amsterdam, Old Amsterdam or Beemster, which is um, also good. It's from a area in the Netherlands which uh, specializes in cheese and, uh, and does really good 
bio eco type of stuff as well. The cows are free range you know, and it's made in a particular way. So I would recommend Boomster or out of Amsterdam. Those are my two favorite ones. They're a little bit mature, so they're a little strong as well. Beamster, actually, you can get the young uh, cheap cheese as well. So I've been looking for a place to get some stroke waffles to wash out the taste of, uh, not wash out, but to take away the taste of the newer herring. Um, I haven't found one here in Dembos, so I'll need to go a little bit outside, maybe to another uh, city or village and see whether I can find a place. Now, if I can't, I'm going to have to show you what they're like from a supermarket, so, but I will show you, show you that for sure. Um, but now what I have found is I'm sitting in a cafe again. It's a little bit after when I've had the Bossa Ball, so I'm going to try my hand at some apple gabak and uh, see uh, what that's like and show you that as well. So this is a traditional Dutch apple pie. Uh, it's got like a, um, I don't know how to explain, like a slightly gingery, spicy um, pastry and the nice apple inside. And again, I'm going to have it with a coffee because it's still you know, 11, 11.30 in the morning and I could use another coffee. The apple gabak has come. This is a slice of the Dutch apple pie. As you can see, it's got this, this nice pastry on top and the nice big chunks of apple. And this is one of my favorite things to have here with the coffee, apart from the Bossa Ball, which you can't find everywhere, but the apple tart, the apple gabak, you can find everywhere around the Netherlands. So do stop at a coffee shop. Don't go to any of these chain places like Starbucks, etc. Go to one of the regular local cafes and have an apple gabak with coffee. something to just keep in mind when you're eating the new herring. Uh, it is raw fish, your hands can smell because you're eating it with your bare hands. Um, I would advise taking some wet wipes along with you to kind of cleanse your hands or some, some hand gel or get a coffee quickly and uh, go to the restroom and wash your hands. Dimbos is actually a nice little town to village if you get there. I might do another video on it later. So I'm in Amstelveen now and there's another market and I've come to see whether I can find a strope waffle place to show you. Some chicken, lots of cheese, lots of clothes, uh, strope waffles anywhere. There we go, a strope waffle place, that blue van there, strope waffles. These are the originals and they've even got some vegan ones here. So you put the syrup in the middle, close it, and then they put it here to dry. Thank you, Al. Okay. Hi, so I got myself a large strobe waffle to try, and uh, I showed you how it was made previously. So, stretch. Fresh stroke waffles are the best. I brought you here to the Amsterdam's bus, the Amsterdam's forest, so that we can go to a place called the Boderai Miezicht, which is a farm uh, and it's a restaurant as well. It used to be a farm and it's a restaurant as well. It's not a fully working farm, but it's pretty well known for its pancakes and it has a real large selection of Dutch pancakes. So I'm going to take you there so I can show you what the Dutch pancakes are like. And that's another speciality of Holland that I um, suggest and advise you to go and try out. Just a little side note, when you're looking to get pancakes in Holland, the Dutch pancakes, uh, the pannekoeken, that's what you call them in Dutch, or pannekoek. Uh, be careful where you get them. Go to a good place because otherwise if it's not good, it won't taste good and you get cheese and ham and all types of stuff on it. Mm -hmm. This is the farm, the Boerderij Miezicht. And inside here you get, uh, there's a vast uh, space here which has uh, seating outside, seating inside. A lot of different stuff so you can come in the summer and you come with the kids there's places for them to play as well so it's a nice place to come this is the menu for the Boderai music and you can see here all of the panakukan they have all the different types just with powdered sugar with ham and syrup and you know, see pineapple I see 
cherry, I see like all different types. Shoma, it's like huge amounts of tracing. And also I see down here that if you've got allergies or lactose intolerance, etc., you can contact them ahead and they will make some special pancakes for you. And they've got a kid's menu as well. So it's open <clears throat> from, hold on, let me see. It's open uh, up until seven o'clock. Uh, but from November, it's only open on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and only till 6. And then it reopens again for weeks next year after spring. So here's a typical Dutch pancake. It's kind of a um, cross between a crepe and a flapjack. Uh, it's bigger, as you can see my hand. Uh, it comes with multiple different toppings. This one I took only with cheese because I'm not that hungry. But you can get cheese and ham. You can get all types of stuff. And you got this nice... Um, sugar syrup which is nice to put on top as well and normally you can also get it with powdered sh sh sugar and that's the traditional is with uh, powdered sugar or cheese and ham so i'm going to enjoy this now and um, let's see what it tastes like i'm pretty sure it's good i've been here before so i know it's good action i'd recommend if you are getting it as i said before look for a good place to get pancakes because it's really difficult to find a place that's actually making them really well anymore and there's only a few places that do the um, the real traditional type i'm on my way to uh, the supermarket just around from where i'm uh, staying in amsterdam and uh, what I'm going to take you there to get is something called Olibollen or Olibolly, which is normally uh, out uh, for sale around the end of the year, typically for Christmas and New Year. Um, but this year it's a little early, so I'm going to go there and try some. There's the little shop. Different types of Olibollies, apple, raisin, normal. I think I'll get a few normal and a few apple. Thank you, Al. So during Christmas and New Year, you get those little like, um, I don't know what they're called, bakery places, frying places, whatever, but they sell donuts, they sell these olibolli, which I'll show you now. And they have um, other stuff, which is like deep fried uh, stuff, like little apple flaps and things like that. But I'm going to show you the olibolli now, just a second. So here's the olibolli that I bought from the little stall there. Um, it's kind of like... Christmas, New Year, street food, if you like here. Um, and uh, I'm going to open this. I'm going to find a place to set you down uh, or set this down so I can open it and show you what's inside. That's the Olibolly in the bag. I'm going to take it back to the house and I'm going to put them on a plate and then I'll show you some more. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm actually, there's a nice place here to sit by the water. So I'm actually going to sit here, enjoy one Olibolly before I head back. And here they are. They're, f they're sprinkled all over with caster sugar or powder sugar, uh, gen generally, but you do get a choice if you don't want that. They're deep fried dough balls, basically, and um, they taste really good. And the tradition is that for New Year, on New Year's Eve, when it turns midnight, you actually have these. So these are served on the table you know, during New Year in Holland, generally. Mm. These ones are good. I like them anyway, but look, you got to watch yourself. Powder sugar all over the place. <laughs> 